the, the story on your husband? So he kept saying, something doesn't feel right. I know something's wrong. Something's wrong, I don't feel right. He goes to the doctor, they do blood work, they do urine, they do all kinds of tests and everything's normal. Three weeks goes by and I pull up from coming home from work and I don't even get out of the car and he says, I'm going to the ER. I said, all right, I'm gonna go get changed, I'll meet you there. So we're in the ER and got this headache. It won't go away. It's not a migraine. It's just this headache that's always there. And so the doctor kept trying to give him pain meds. He's like, I don't want your drugs. I just want to know what's going on. And he actually, you know, the doctor actually believed him, which was surprising. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, look, let me do a CAT scan. I, I believe you don't want your medicine. I, I believe you when you say something's wrong. So, <laughs> he looks at me and he says, oh, I can't afford a CAT scan. I'm like, please get the CAT scan. <laughs> Just please. I said, I said, is this going to take long? Because I hadn't eaten, hadn't fed the animals. I said, it's two, three miles from my house. I said, I'm going to run home. I'll be right back. I didn't even get in the door. And he calls me and he says, you're taking me to Crozier in an ambulance. So I fly back to Taylor because it's right there. I get lost following the ambulance mm. to Crozier. They put him in the ICU. And the next day, they did an MRI. And we're standing in his room in, his, in the ICU. And I look over at the nurse's station. And they're watching, they're looking at pictures. And I knew it, it was him. I could see that tumor and it was big, this big. I knew at one o'clock in the afternoon that my world was over, that my life, his life will never be the same. And I had to wait for almost six hours for that surgeon to come. And in the meantime, I got on the ball. I started talking to my doctor friends because he wasn't getting his surgery done there. I was taking him where he was going to get the best possible care. And when the surgeon finally did show up, my daughter says, we did, we, we, we snagged him in the hall before he came in because I knew it was a tumor. I didn't realize at the time that it was a glioblastoma. He said, I'm gonna operate tomorrow. I'll get 90%. He's got 12 to 14 months. And that was his greeting to me and my daughter and my sister. And I said, no, you're not gonna operate. And I took him out of there the next day down to Hub. And uh, they waited, they took their time, they took excellent MRIs, really good mapping of the brain, and they were able to get 98% of a tumor the size of my fist. It was right here, right temporal lobe. He was never the same. All of this back here, this is why we bought this house. He fished. Like, it was his job. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I have 50 fishing rods in my basement. There's a dock here because of him. He hiked these woods. All of them. He walked. Even though he knew. We knew. We knew this was a landfill just because when we walked back here, all the broken glass. There's an old Cadillac car back there. What's left of it? It's been rusted. There's not much left. But he wouldn't, wouldn't give this up. Tell me. He may, what, Tell me about his, his. Uh, you know, when you realized things were terminal. I know that diagnosis is. is it is terminal. Terminal. It is. There it is. It is a death sentence. Following the surgery, it, it was there a glimmer of hope. 
We, we did a clinical trial mm -hmm. called DCVAX, where they, um, it's part of the reason why they held off on the surgery right away. Uh, so they take, when they take the tumor out, they, uh, they send some of the tumor cells, I think, I forget where they sent them. For the lab. To, yeah, right. to out of state, like. But they processed that. They, and they turned it into like, um, they mix that uh, with his, with the, it's kind of like a flu shot. Right, right. So they're, they're. Healthy they're, cells, compromised cells. Yeah. Right. To, to try and fight it, right. to see if it would work. I think it actually got him maybe four months. He made it almost 18 months to the day from diagnosis. He was diagnosed February 25th, 2015. And his last day was 8-22-2016. And he did really good for the most part. And he had short-term memory loss. Then things started going bad. He, he started losing, well, he started having little mini strokes. Mm -hmm. And then he couldn't open his eye. And then he couldn't, he, he couldn't make a fist. Right. Couldn't hold on to the walker. He would just stand there and fall over. What did he do in life? What was his career? Other than fishing. Other than fishing? <laughs> he worked at, uh, for Sodexo at Eastern University for a very long time, and um, they were awesome. They were so supportive. Eastern University, not Sodexo, but Eastern University was unbelievable. You you carry him with you. I do. Look, he's right here too, in my ring. His ashes are in my ring. <laughs> it's a little scratched up. <laughs> and you also. Oh, my little traveling companion. <laughs> That's, I take him with me everywhere I go. Everywhere you go. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Comforting. You know what? We, we made a pact that we would be cremated, and wherever we went that was somewhere new, we would, we would spread a little ash. Not all, just, just a little. Just a touch. Just to say, oh, here, honey, here we are. <laughs> um, I actually have some marbles that have his ashes in it too, but I'm not throwing them in that creek. Yeah. In either one of them. Tell me what is going on here. <clears throat> I think a whole lot of people don't know what's going on here and they're just dumping stuff. They're just dumping. I've seen people come back here with trucks and just dump. And then I see the burrow come and grind it up and we're standing on it. Look at this road. You think this road is here? I mean, look at this. There's so much different things here. There's big slabs of concrete. They just ripped this up. You know, well, you wouldn't even know this. This whole section right here. Three months ago, they just tore this up because there was a sewer line. Oh. To that, right there. Right, yeah. You wouldn't even know because they just pushed it all back on there. All of that down there. It's all black top that they pulled from who knows where, ground it up and just different, shoved it down Different here. projects and things. This is, this is, yeah, I want a great place to put it, right? Get it out of the way. Oh, we'll make a nice little turnaround for the people that come down here that don't know where they're going. Mm. It's easy to get lost down here. <laughs>